Hello, Ryan here from RLF Vacuum Cleaners in Lake Heath. And in today's video, I have a control board from a coffee machine that has an issue. And we're going to go through the basic diagnostic steps, hopefully fault find and get it up and running again. Uh, the fault with this board is, uh, on this machine you have two dual grinders. And uh, the fault with this machine was, uh, this machine has two grinders. And they were running intermittently and running without being without the signal being sent to run them. So we obviously got some sort of control issue. Uh, the control issue only happened when the relay was engaged. This, this is the relay they use for the safety chain. So what happens is you have loads of sensors to make sure the machine is all complete and you can't get your fingers in. When that was all engaged, this relay clicks over to provide power to these three triacs. And then you have your opto couplers. So I've obviously got an issue somewhere with control. That's obviously going to be somewhere. It's obviously not the relay because the relay is working fine. It's not going to be this side of the board because this side of the board is for something different. So it's going to boil down to either an opto coupler fault, a triac fault, or a resistor fault. Really unlikely to be a resistor because it's working. If a resistor had failed, something wouldn't work. So I'm guessing probably going to be a triac failure. So we're going to test these triacs. So I'm going to flip the board over. I work with these boards all the time. So I'll just get my meter in continuity. Now on these particular triacs, the two left terminals are your A1 and your A2. Hello, future Ryan here. Uh, I didn't really explain triacs very good so I'm going to quickly explain them in this little video. Triacs are basically just a switch on and off. You have three terminals on this particular one. You have A1, A2 and gate. What happens is you apply a positive or negative voltage at the gate. Electricity conducts between A1 and A2. Now, this particular one is actually shorted. You're actually getting short circuit between A1 and A2 but under normal conditions they should be open circuit until you provide a voltage to the gate which then lets it conduct. Uh, triacs are a miracle this particular one here can do 12 amps and you can get slightly bigger packaged ones that go up to 25 amps tiny little things and they used a lot in control circuitry a lot of heating things are controlled by triacs they're small, they're very cheap, and they're very efficient. Use your failure modes on these, so they usually go short circuit. So if you've got something that's connected up to a big heating element, and the heat element doesn't stop, and you've rolled out controlled issue, probably going to be a triax shorted. So that's a brief explanation on triax. Use the left. The left, you want two. Yeah, two on the left. So... That one, okay. Right up. Got a short triac. That caused the issue. Move on to the other one. Oop, that one's all right. Oop. Yeah, that one's fine. We've got a short triac on the middle one. What we'll do while we're here, we will. Check the output of the opto coupler. Again, we're on the right one. 137. So we've got something on the output of that one. So we've got a connection on the output of the opto coupler. Now, opto couplers work well, very simply you have like a little led on one side and on the other side you have a light sensitive conducting material opto couplers are brilliant for changes of voltages so you can have one side control say i don't know five volts for example and then you have the other side control 240 24 volt range is endless so i'll put that onto diode so i'll check that one there 
nothing. Swap the leaves over. So get in one volt drop. Get in one volt drop there. One volt drop there. So that's all good. So we've obviously got. Yeah, 0 0.1 that side, nothing on that one, nothing on that one. So this one here, so we have a triac that's shorted and we have an optocoupler that is, well, shorted again, showing the resistance when it's not engaged. Um, hold it up to the camera. All the resistors and everything looks alright, they've got any burn marks. What we'll do is we'll check this because this was acting funny as well while it was on the machine. If I can, I'll insert a picture of it on the machine. So we've got a diode here. Try and get this on the camera. That diode there is shorted. Try it in the opposite direction. So we've got diode there that's shorted in both directions. Where the LED? LED's got 0.1 volt drop. Got 0.13 drops on that LED is buggered. Well, that LED is not acting as it should. But diode that's shorted, that shorted diode might be causing the LED an issue. So I take that out of circuit. We've got an optocoupler that's shorted on the output and a triac that's shorted. Hmm, this is going to be a bit of an interesting one to diagnose and fix. Optocoupler, easy enough, we can swap that or one off the end. These end ones aren't used on this particular machine. Triac, going to be a bit of a difficult one because I don't actually have that many triacs. Don't know how well they could come off on camera. But they are BTB12600 BW triax. Uh, what triax we got? I've got a couple of triax I nicked from something the other day. Nah, they're totally different than triax. So what we'll do is, we'll fire up the soldering iron, we'll take this diode out, check the LED again. So we've got a shorter diode, shorter optocoupler, shorter tri. It's bored, it's well and truly knackered. That's not to say that we've got to fix these issues, we're coming across another one. So yeah, we'll fire up the soldering iron, take this diode out, see if I've got another diode, and we'll go from there. I've managed to find another diode. I can rob this from an old circuit board for again. Nothing that way. Okay, 0.6 volts that way. So we'll track that onto the board. Like so. Uh, I've got the new diode soldered in, unfortunately it's one I had to rob for another circuit board, it's just the leads are cut a bit too short but it's good enough for what I want for testing purposes. It's got the new diode in there, unfortunately when I put the new diode in, the LED, oh, no, the LED was no good, so I've got a new LED, we're just going to solder in like so, I only took the one out, just put a new one in, I'll solder that in. For the solder and iron to heat up. I'll bring that in a bit closer for you. No, I do ain't gonna work, is it? Solder and iron should be heated up. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna gently. Do one 
inside quickly. Stop, I not ready yet. That's the one side. Do the side. Anyway, ladies, hold it on like so. Grab our cutters, our cutter and flash. So now we sort that diode out. We should be safe to put 24 volts on, put some power into it, and see what happens. So, we've got that set to 24 volts. We'll put a current limit on. Current limit on. We'll put 30 milliamps, that should be enough for power relay. Goes on the upside. Twenty four volt. Hey, hey, looking good. That's that bit fixed. Now we have to move on to the opto coupler. It's going to be a bit trickier. Take one of these ones off the end. She isn't being used. And we'll just use a bit of desolder and braid to clean the holes up.
uh, and we're back again. Uh, this is the circuit board all complete. So it moves a good octo coupler to that position. Uh, I'll remove the triac and clean the holes out. Unfortunately, I don't have another one of these triacs, so I'm going to order one of them. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give the board a quick clean up, clean a lot of that flux residue off, and make it all nice and clean and shiny. Make sure it's got all the stuff here. Give it a nice clean up, and then when the, the new triac turns up, I'll fit that. But this is more of a fault finding video. Uh, circuit walls like this is nice and basic to start off with. This side here is mains filtering for a power supply. Again, never ever known these to go wrong. But actually, this is the technical bit. You've got your safety relay there, runs on 24 volt, that switches your mains power via triac to power these grinder motors. And these are controlled by opto couplers with a low voltage signal which is you send a signal and then that signal goes to ground which generates which turns an LED on inside which then creates a which then activates the light sensitive conducting material which then sends the gate voltage to the track turn it on and then when you finish with it turn the LED off stops conducting turns the track off so yeah hope this video has been some help thank you very much for watching and goodbye